Okay, so we are now in April. We didn't get any new iPads in March, and it turns out that we won't be seeing any new iPads in April either. As according to Mark Gurman, these have now been delayed once again until May. So what is really happening with this many delays? Well, here's everything we know, as well as some brand new details on these new iPad Pros. Also, we have now launched our own Zone of Tech Discord where we can talk about tech, video ideas, leaks and rumors, and you can even ask me and my team any questions that you guys have. You can also share your tech setups amongst yourselves, level up and even interact with Tim Cook himself, or at least the AI version of him. It's free to join and anyone can do so by using the link below. I'll be on Discord with my team right after this video goes live to interact with you guys, so feel free to join up and let's have some fun talking tech. Okay, so let's start off with the constant iPad delays. Some of you might have realized that we didn't get any new iPads in 2023 at all, making it the first year since the launch of the iPad back in 2010, when Apple has had no new iPads to launch at all. Like, even their most recent iPad that got updated, which is the iPad Pro, that one only saw an update in October of 2022 a year and a half ago. Now, the initial release for these new iPad Pros was expected to be in March, but then this got pushed into April. And the reason for this first delay, which I covered in our previous video, was apparently Apple wanting to ship these new iPad Pros with a specific version of iPadOS 17.4. This version was not ready and it wasn't scheduled to be ready until late March or even sometime in April. And even once ready, it then had to be sent to the factories to get this iPadOS version 17.4 pre-installed. So when I saw this, even April seemed like a bit of a stretch to me. And now it's been further pushed into May, according to Mark Gurman. In fact, the most recent thing that Mark Gurman said over the weekend is a potential May the 6th release date in the stores. And the reason for this further delay is apparently production issues caused by their new displays. Now, this isn't something that just Mark Gurman reported on, other sources have too. Samsung was originally set to supply the OLED panels for the 11-inch iPad Pro, while LG was set to supply the OLED panels for the 12.9-inch model. But according to South Korean tech news site Hankook, Samsung has been facing poor yields on the OLED panel for the 11-inch iPad Pro, which in turn meant that Apple had to switch some of their production for the 11-inch panels to LG instead. So LG now has apparently 60% of all of iPad Pro's display to manufacture, reason why we have another delay. Of course, most of you probably know by now that both of these iPad Pros will feature a very special type of OLED panel, one that uses dual OLED layers, hence increasing the brightness from what OLED displays on tablets can do today, which is usually around 400 to 500 nits. Now, if you want your iPad's display to look even better, that's where our new wallpaper spec Face It Fusion comes in. And this is really one of our most special packs yet. And that's not just because of the 10 stunning designs that look amazing on your iPad, iPhone, and Mac, but it's so special because it was made by our team member Zara. As some of you might know, Zara is our developer for wallpapers. She's been the heart and soul behind it. And not only is Zara our front-end and back-end developer, but she's also extremely talented at art and design. So you can show Zara some support by downloading her pack, Face It Fusion, which you can find in our app wallpapers on iOS and Android today. Okay, now going back to the display of the iPads, Apple is reportedly aiming for an unrivaled image quality, as well as a lightweight design. We've already seen this from the CAD models that got leaked before, which did indeed show a noticeably thinner body. That was 13.5% thinner on the 11 inch and a massive 21.8% thinner on the 12.9 inch model. And we do know by now that these new displays were the main thing to thank for this thickness decrease and also one of the main causes for these significant delays. Now, even though this may seem disappointing, I do actually have some good news here. There are a couple of new details about these iPad Pros that got leaked that make them even more exciting than we thought. For example, in iPadOS 17.5 beta, there seems to be a hidden code referencing a V4 Apple Pencil. Of course, this is more than likely a direct hint at the redesigned Apple Pencil that's been rumored before to come with these iPad Pros, which would indeed be the fourth generation. And what's interesting here is that apparently it supports a brand new squeeze gesture. The current Apple Pencil only supports a double tap gesture. This can be customized to switch between the current tools and the eraser, switch between the current tool and the last one used, 
show the color palette or show the ink attributes. So I'm not really sure if this new squeeze gesture would replace the double tap or if this will be an entirely new secondary input method. On one hand, I was personally never a fan of the double tap gesture, as oftentimes it simply did not work for me, so I do think that a squeeze gesture will be far better. But on the other hand, I do believe that it would also be nice to have the ability to trigger two different actions, like squeezing for the eraser and then double tapping to go to the previous tool, for example. There was also that previously leaked color sampling sensor for which Apple had applied for a patent for, which would allow you to hold the pencil on any real-world object in order to sample its color and also its texture. However, since we don't have any mention of this in iPadOS 17.5 at all, I think that it might not be coming after all. But something that is coming is the battery capacity and the battery cycle count. This was found by Steve Moser and Aaron Paris in iPadOS 17.5 beta, and apparently we will finally be able to see the battery health on the new iPad Pro and the new iPad Air. Because yes, the iPads were never able to display their battery health for whatever reason. If you wanted to see that, you had to connect them to your Mac and then open up a tool such as Coconut Battery. There was no native battery health support despite the iPhone, the Mac, and even the Apple Watch supporting this. And the best part here is that we're not just getting the battery percentage support, but also support for battery cycle count, which is something that only the iPhone 15 supports, as well as the MacBooks. And what's even better here is that the iPhone 15s also seriously improved their battery longevity by increasing the rated cycle count at which the battery health remains at 80% or higher from 500 cycles to 1000. Which makes me think that if these iPad Pros are coming with the ability to read the cycle count, we might see some increased battery longevity here too. Although the iPads do already support the 1000 cycles, so maybe, maybe we could see an increase to 1500. After all, some phones like the OnePlus 12 have even higher ratings of 1600 cycles for retaining an 80% health. Now, something else that might point towards a brand new feature is a very specific thing that Digitimes have said. They've stated that another reason for the delays that I mentioned at the start of the video are also the lenses for the cameras. Now, this is quite interesting, as we haven't really had any leaks suggesting that we will be getting any new cameras, aside from, of course, the repositioned landscape Face ID plus front camera. I have previously speculated that the back cameras will more than likely be updated, as the main sensor is still the same one as on the 2018 iPad Pro, while the ultra-wide is still the same one as on the 2020 model. Personally, I never take photos with my iPad, but for those of you who do, or for those of you who like to use the cameras to capture content, content to then edit directly on the iPad, Apple should definitely upgrade the cameras, especially considering how expensive the iPad Pros really are. Also, back in March, the chip details for 16 of Apple's upcoming products have been leaked including those for the next-generation iPad mini and the next-gen entry-level iPad. As we know, these new iPad Pros will be getting the M3 chip, and then the new iPad Airs will get the M2. And according to this leaked info, the 7th-gen iPad mini will be getting the A17, which I'm assuming is the A17 Pro, since there's no standalone version of the A17. Of course, this will be a pretty significant upgrade from the A15 inside the current mini. And if we do get the A17 Pro, then uh, this means that we'll also get more RAM from 4 gigabytes to 8. And I also expect the storage to get bumped, possibly even to 128 gigabytes. At least that is the minimum storage that the A17 Pro chip was ever paired with. So unless Apple releases a standalone version of the A17 chip just for this iPad mini alone, then the 7th gen mini will indeed be a major performance upgrade. And then the standard iPad is said to be getting bumped to the A14, at least that's what this leak stated. Although the 10th gen iPad already has the A14, so unless it's the 9th gen getting the A14 too, it could also be a HomePod with a display apparently. However, it is quite unlikely that we'll see the new mini and the new entry-level iPads announced alongside the iPad Pros, as they were never rumored to be released alongside them, and also a brand new regulatory filing that just came out shows four models of the iPad that are just about to come out likely corresponding to the two sizes for both the iPad Pro and then the iPad Air. Which means that, as expected, we would only see the new mini and the base iPad in either September or October. But let me know, what do you guys think about all these delays and all the changes that the new iPad Pros will come with? Don't forget to check out our Discord if you want to continue the conversation there. I'm Daniel, this means Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.